Okay, today we're going to derive a function for the rotational moment of inertia of a long, thin rod when it is rotated around its end. Now, there's several different types of moment of inertia. Uh, there's something called area moment of inertia, and that has to do with the stiffness of a beam. That's something we would talk about in beam deflection or statics in an engineering course, and that's not what we're talking about here. Uh, what we're talking about here is the rotational moment of inertia, and that really is just the tendency of a object, in this case, a long, thin rod, to resist changes in, in its motion about an axis. And the axis we care about today is the end of this rod. Uh, so really what this does is this ties back into physics, uh, where if we were to put a torque on an object and we wanted to solve for its angular acceleration, we would need to know the rotational moment of inertia. So that's what we're going to derive here today. Now this rod, the total rod, has some mass m and some length l. And given just these two variables, we're going to come up with a function for the rotational moment of inertia of the entire rod. Now we know the moment of inertia of a particle is given by the equation mr squared, where m is the mass of the particle and r is the distance between the particle and the axis of rotation. Now you want, if you want to see this derived, click up here and you can see where it comes from. The issue when we're dealing with a long thin rod like this is that there's lots of different particles at lots of different radii. A little particle out here on the end of this rod has a much greater radius than a particle over here on this rod because it's much closer to the pivot point. So rather than looking at the entire rod as one big particle all at one radius, we're going to break this rod up into an infinite number of very tiny slices. So what I want to do is take this rod and slice it up into very tiny pieces so that a single slice is all at a single radius. So we're going to treat this slice as though it is a single particle. And if we can find the inertia of just a single particle, then we'll be able to add up the inertia of all the particles or all the slices along this rod and come up with the total inertia of the entire rod. So in order to solve for the inertia of this slice right here, first we need to solve for the mass of the slice. Now in order to come up with the mass of just this slice, what we need to do is take a look at the entire mass of the rod, that's m, and the entire length of the rod, l. And I want you to think about some, a kind of strange idea, and that is the mass per unit length of the rod. We know the total mass is m and the total length is l, but what if we were to have something like a rod made of the same material, the same thickness, that was only half as long? It would have half as much m, or half as much mass. If it was a third as long, it would have one third the mass, or if it was a quarter as long, it would have one quarter the mass. Now we have this infinitely small slice of rod here. And what I want you to realize is that the mass of a chunk of rod or a length of rod is proportional to its length. And this leads us up to a strange idea, and that is the mass per unit length of the rod, or really the ratio m over l. If I can take this mass per unit length and multiply it by the length of rod with which I am concerned, I'll have the mass of that length of rod. So if I'm talking about a length of rod that is only dr long or infinitely thin, I do the mass per unit length multiplied by dr, that's gonna give me the mass of just that little piece or that little slice of rod. Now this isn't the total mass of the entire rod, so I don't want to call this m, I'm going to call this dm. It is an infinitely small chunk or an infinitely small piece of the total mass m. Now let's say for fun, just because we're starting to see a dr in this, uh, let's go ahead and take an integral of this just, just to see what happens, just humor me on this. So let's say we were to look at all of the slices of rod from a radius of zero all the way up to a radius of L, or along this entire rod. It would mean we would evaluate our definite integral from zero to L. And lo and behold, we find that in integrating all of our little slices of mass, we come up with the total mass of the entire rod. That is to say, the total mass of the rod, which we already knew was M, is equal to, wait for it, M. Hey, what do you know? Calculus works. 
So let's go back to what it is we're actually trying to solve for here, and that is the total inertia of the entire rod. So in order to do that, I want to look at not just the mass of this slice right here, I want to look at the inertia of the slice. Now if we treat this slice right here as a particle, it has some mass given by this equation right here and some radius, just add some value r. So the inertia of this slice is going to be given by its mass multiplied by the radius squared. Or to rearrange this, now we have the inertia of a slice. And so I don't want to call this I the total inertia. It's just the inertia of an infinitely small piece. So I'm going to call this DI. Now, just like we saw over here, when we added up all of our little slices of mass, we got the total mass. Here, if we add up all of our little pieces of inertia, that's going to give us the total inertia. And remember, that is what we're trying to solve for. So the total inertia I is going to be the infinite sum of all of our little slices or pieces of inertia. So to expand our DI term out with what we found over here, we're going to integrate this function and realize we're looking at the definite integral from zero to L. And that is to say we care about all of our slices from a radius of zero all the way over to a radius of L. So to rearrange and evaluate the integral, we find the total rotational moment of inertia of the rod around its end is one third ml squared. So what we've done here to find the rotational moment of inertia of this rod around its end is we've broken this rod up into an infinite number of individual slices and understanding or by applying calculus, we've managed to come up with the moment of inertia of a slice and then in summation, we've managed to come up with the moment of inertia of the entire rod. So that is the rotational moment of inertia of a rod around its end and that's all for now.